I think Europe is important to the UK. Europe uh, presents a big market for the UK. It's integrated in that market. The project that Europe is on that might include more integration, UK will have to be part of if it want to wants to benefit from those markets. If you talk to people in the street, I, I don't think that uh, they perceive the UK as being part of the Union because uh, the UK has been quite distant uh, in uh, the whole process. Uh, and actually it has been uh, uh, quite far from the big troubles uh, of the last uh, few years which have uh, created so much division and passions about the future of the Euro area. Clearly in this city the top themes are the Eurozone, the crisis in the Eurozone, stabilisation of the Eurozone and Britain and Europe, the whole question of whether Britain is going to um, seriously renegotiate the terms of its membership, which sounds a little bit unlikely, and put it as it will, because this government's committed to it, to an in-out referendum before the end of 2017. We are a second tier member of the EU by virtue of not joining the Europe. That's not, I'm not arguing we necessarily should have done. You can have an argument, as Martin Sambu did recently in a, in a very good piece in the FT, that had Britain been in, the handling of the Eurozone crisis would have been very different because it would have been growth orientated in a way it hasn't been. Uh, there probably would have been a Franco British alliance strong enough to face down the Germans. The big question you said is whether the Euro survive, will survive in the next five, ten years. Um, will it? Uh, I'm not so sure after Greece. I mean, I think there are two scenarios at this point. Maybe the euro will survive, uh, and then I think in that scenario, uh, maybe you know the UK will find uh, a way to 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 stay in the euro uh, in the EU with some kind of deal without challenging uh, uh, you know the foundation of the treaty. But then there is a second scenario, which is actually unfortunately what seems to uh, to you know to be the most likely one which is that the Greek exit will be very messy, messy, even if it's not going to be a full exit, but the whole uh, handling of the Greek crisis will be such a sign of weakness of uh, the Eurozone and uh, what, uh, you know, what this whole uh, kind of uh, union means for, for, for the citizens of the, of, uh, of the Euro that eventually it will uh, weaken substantially you know, the process and there will be actually less appetite, even from core Europe, to accelerate the political integration. So if, if the Prime Minister thinks about, thinks at this from the perspective of what do I need to win a referendum, will he be really making the case about the relationship between the internal market and the Eurozone, the risk of caucusing. I wonder whether um, it's, it's, it's specifically the questions of sovereignty, the question of ever closer union, the question of national parliament, and probably the question of free movement immigration, which will probably be the most telling. I think the debate tonight included a blend of Britons and continental Europeans, which I think put a refreshing uh, angle to the conversation because the continental Europeans are not that faced at the moment with the Brexit, they're dealing with other stuff. So that kind of calibrates it. But I was also surprised with the relatively pro-European stance of most of the Britons in the room and a conversation on what's the positive message of Europe rather than what do we break down. And somewhere that's where the conversation will need to settle.